here I have two different scenes. So I have main and main one and main two. Uh, it's just a simple label and a button. So if I play, I can just switch scenes very easily. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this a lot more pretty, essentially. We're going to be going through the process of just having better UI in your game and different ways to transition. So we're going to be exploring with tweening and animation player. So the first thing we'll do is we'll um, go over the button itself. So we're going to learn about tweening uh, first. So for the button, I want you to go into your script. We're going to go to our button. We're going to go down to control. Now, if you don't know already, I'm going to try to always repeat these things. But if you don't know already, button is a subclass of control. Thus, we have the functions that belong to control. Control always has mouse entered and mouse exited. So we're going to connect mouse entered and we're going to connect mouse exited. All right. <clears throat> Now, in our mouse exited, we're going to, or outside of it, we're going to create a variable called tweening, and then we're going to set it to false by default. Now, I want to set it to false whenever we exit, and then we'll set it to true on mouse entered. Now, outside of this, we want two different functions. We're going to create function down and function up. Now, what these are going to do is we're going to essentially be able to control the hovering of our button. So we want our button to essentially do this manually. It's going to go up and down like that as our mouse enters it. So that way it kind of looks like I have it hovered with an, a nice animation. Okay. So in our down, the first thing we want to do is we want to check, well, in both, we want to check if tweening is true. So we can do that by saying if tweening and then what we can do is we can create a tween by or a tween node by saying variable tween one is equal to create tween and then we easily not easily but nicely we can tween the property of the position so we're going to say tween dot tween one dot tween property we're going to get the button we're going to get the global position or position i think position works fine as well um, and we're going to take it to vector zero and negative uh, 10. Okay. And then we're going to do this over 0.5 seconds. You can do it one second, whatever you want, like, but that's pretty much it. And then the rest of this is to kind of smoothen it out a little bit. And you, you can kind of play with it and do whatever you'd like, but this is just uh, my default settings essentially. And then we're going to do say tween one dot tween callback up now tween callback will essentially wait for this tween property or this tween to be done and then we're going to call the function up right so we're going to go down and then up and then we're going to do the same thing in up or yeah in up but we're going to go the opposite direction so we're going to create the tween we're going to do the same thing but we're going to go upwards 10 positions 10 pixels okay and then we're going to call down when it's when it's finished and that's it so now we can just call one of these whichever one whenever we enter the mouse or whenever we enter the button so now if i play and i hover it you can see that it hovers 10 pixels up and if i leave it stops and what's nice about this is that the you can kind of see it's hard to see but the tweening finishes even if i leave it Yeah, there we go. So it finishes the tween even if I leave it. So you can see it goes down. It's a little buggy because we're always going to be calling down and we can keep doing this. But you can kind of figure that out and how to keep that position set. So you can find a position and always make sure that it sets to that position. But I'll let you be creative and figure that out on your own. So um, next up is going. we're going to learn about transitioning. So Keep in mind that was using the position. So we, we were able to switch the position, play around with the transform of the position. Now, when it comes to different animations and transitions and all these effects, you have to try to be creative with it. So let's add an animation player and let's add a panel. We'll go to panel and let's take this panel and make it as big as the screen. I'll turn on grid snap. There we go. And in our panel, let's um, create, make it black. So let's go here and just make it black. There we go. Now, when we do transitions, when you think about game transitions, generally there's a bunch of different things you can see. There's either 
for example, let's do this manually. Before we start playing around with things, let's do it manually. One example is modulation. So modulation would look like this. It's a fade in, fade out, right? So we have a fade in and fade out, or opposite of what I just said, right? Or we can have, let's see, let's go to the, not localization, transform. We can play with the position. So this, because this is our screen right here, we can see it as a moving the screen off of, or the black part off of the screen, right? So if we do this, we can take it off as if, as if our screen is being squinted that way, right? So there's that. We can also do the scaling. We can, whoops, we can do this, right? So we can go from this to that. So that could be a transition. We could take the size, whoops, whoopsie. The size, we can do the same thing, right? We can go upwards, right? So there's a lot of different things that we can do and you can be creative with this. Um, one of the harder things to do is kind of the old Pokemon style game, which is kind of good to go into a circle. Um, that, that one would need a shader, I believe, um, or you can try to use it with the panel and theme override the panel and go inwards, but that would be a little hard and you ha you'd have to be creative with it. Um, but it is definitely possible. So let's, let's explore one or two different ways to do this. So first of all, let's go to animation and let's say transition. And let's copy that, let's play it, and let's do a few things before we actually start animating anything. So first, let's go to animation, the nodes, the signals, and let's go to animation finished and connect it to the world. And then in here, we'll say, um, over here in the button press, actually, we'll say, get node animation player dot play dot play, and then we'll play the transition. Make sure it's in a string. So we'll play the transition. And then once that transition is over, then we will change scene. So this is a, a quick way to do this. It's not the best way, but it, it's a local way to do this. I have a better video on transitioning um, different scenes. Um, you should definitely check that out. And yeah, but in back to this video, um, let's explore a few different ways to animate our panel. So the first way we can do is let's explore the, the different, the way to push it to the side. So first off, this is our default. Right? So the first thing we can do is probably make this visible because by default, we want this to have a reset. Actually, nope. Sorry, one second. Let me just delete this. And if I add that again, let's create a reset track. Let's go to the reset track and go here and set that by off by default. And then let's set this to the auto play on load. So it'll automatically play this. Okay, so the transition, We'll do this, okay? So here, we'll go back to our panel. So it will make it visible, right? We can, then we can take the size, for example. We'll, yeah, sure, create reset track. And then we'll go to one second, or we can do two seconds, actually. And in at two seconds, what we can do is get the end result. So let's say I want the end result of our Y axis to be zero, right? And now I key that, and so now it'll look like that. Right. So now if I play, hopefully it resets. Ooh. Okay. This is one of the issues that I always get. I'm pretty sure we need to take our panel and go to, whoop, wait one second, actually main two. Why does it say main two? Actually, that's interesting. What is going on? Very interesting. Got a little bug that I've never seen before. Ah, okay, wait, hold on. Sorry about that. Okay, I just realized. So here, because we're always finishing, it's always playing the reset one. So we have to actually check for the animation name. So we'll say if animation name equals to transition, then we will change scenes. Okay, that was why that was happening. That was interesting. Okay, so now we're back in the main scene. I click this and nothing happens. Oh man, oh, I got a bug here. Ah, that's why, okay. <laughs> One more time, there we go. All right, there we go. So as you can see, that's kind of our transition. We can make it a lot faster. So we can actually just take this and go to point three maybe. Okay, we can move that here. Let's play one more time. 
and there we go there's our transition so it looks it's it's a very slidey up transition right so you can play around with this and do whatever you'd like maybe we also want the x and y so let's go back to our panel and let's go over here and set this to zero zero and let's also let's key that now this should have changed to zero zero so let's play and see what we get and now we've got a little a much different transition right okay so that's pretty much it that's all my advice and tips and tricks just keep in mind that you can be very creative with this. So be creative with the size, position, rotation, scale, right? You could you could do rotation. You could kind of flip it, right? That would be kind of interesting to see. Um, kind of like a, I think the, not a Pokemon. There was a game back in the day that used to flip the screen when you transitioned. But that's definitely something you can do. Um, there is visibility. You can play with the modulation. There is... I think that's basically it. The transform and the modulation are probably the biggest tips that most people like to use in, in terms of transitioning. Um, one last tip I'll, I guess I'll give is let's make this kind of big. In If you want a circle, it's kind of hard to get a good circle. But one, one kind of thing I do is this. I'll, uh, this is my circle. It's not great, obviously. Maybe let's do 400. Because it's not actually a circle, obviously. But if you do this, it kind of looks like a circle. So, you know, you can kind of play around with this if you'd like. And, you know, you can um, take this and do that and out and scale it and it'll stay as a circle. So um, definitely do play with these things. Play with the radius. Um, play with these things. Play with the values. Be creative, be as creative as you want, and I would love to see what you guys come up with. So definitely join my Discord down below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.